started. So welcome everyone to the Platform Podcast. On this episode, I'm excited to have Coach Brandon Denoya with us. He is the women's D1 college coach at Syracuse University, a fantastic Division I program. And Brandon brings into this conversation not just information about Syracuse, but also information about other universities in the U.S. as well. So, Brandon, how you going, man? Good, good. Um, excited to, like, a couple weeks away from heading down there, so I'm excited. That's awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, I can't wait. Have you ever been to New Zealand before? No, I haven't. I so guess. we just actually had one of our players graduate from New Zealand and she always talked about it and it always sounded fun. And so it's, it's exciting that I get to go and a goalkeeper that I know plays for, I think the Wellington Phoenix is at the, the club. Yeah. So she's playing down there now that, so it'll be exciting. I'm hoping I can try to catch a game while I'm down there. Absolutely, man. And in terms of like, New Zealand culture. How was it coaching a New Zealand a New Zealand athlete? Because I know that every country is a bit different. The way that they approach the game, the way that they've been developed as an athlete. What did you think about New Zealand student athletes? Yeah, I mean, I thought she was fantastic as far as being a student, and I thought she fit in perfectly with the team. I mean, it was interesting because we picked her up during COVID in 2020. And so, you know, we only got to see video of her and, you know, we took a chance on her and, you know, she was a big part of our, our team last year. I think she was one of the top goal scorers um, for us this past season. Um, this season wasn't a fantastic season for us, but she still was one of the, our, our top goal scorers. So, um, yeah, it was, it was good having her on the team and, you know, exciting. So I think she's the second player we've had uh from new zealand so just uh you know it's kind of cool and now that I, we get to go there and get to kind of see players firsthand it'll be i'm excited awesome man one question that i always ask college coaches is obviously you had a great college career yourself and you've worked at two great d1 programs you were at richmond right and then you went to mississippi state is that am i correct in saying that i was at yeah i was at sienna college for seven years um won a championship there um then i went to mississippi state then i went to richmond and now here why did you want to be a college coach uh it's kind of a interesting story so when i was in high school i got sick and i was you know kind of a pretty i was a i was a good player i would say and i got sick and didn't get recruited really um i had cancer um and I, I you know i was lucky i beat the cancer but it was like in a very important time to be recruited was when i was sick and so i didn't really get recruited but the one kind of school that looked at me um i kind of fell in love with the process and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like one day I would like to be the one to help people like find a school. And I want to be the one that like gives them tours and talks about the program. And I've, you know, always had a passion for soccer. I, you know, always wanted to stay in the game for as long as possible. So coaching and the, and the college game kind of like fit perfect for me because I got to help kids get to college and I got to stay in the game. So it was kind of like a win-win for me. And that's kind of what drew me to it. And I started coaching in college the day I graduated. So yeah. it was kind of like a, it was like a quick transition. That's so cool because it's such an interesting question to ask coaches because everyone's a bit different. And I think like that's really important for people to know because a lot of athletes that are listening to this have obviously got aspirations to play for your program. You guys are elite. You do such a great job. And you've worked with some of the most elite athletes around the world. And, you know, there's some coaches that are in it for 
just getting the wins and that's it right they all care about the stats but then there's other coaches that care about the development and the journey of athletes and giving them something that you know either the coach had or didn't have in college and that's the reason why i started my recruitment agency i, I started platform sports because i actually didn't go to the us i didn't get the opportunity i didn't get the education around and that's why i'm here so that's awesome to know that what's really unique about your program like in the way that you guys do things yeah i mean First of all, we're the the most unique thing is we're in the ACC. So the ACC, there's I don't know how much like everyone knows, but um, the ACC is the top uh, conference in women's and pretty much men's uh, college soccer. And uh, so we're competing against the best players. Like if you put our conference against a lot of professional leagues, we would be at the top which is kind of uh so it's a really high level um and so it's fun that we get to compete against you know national team players full national team players from other countries you know uh florida state had players in the world cup this past season Pitt had players in the world cup this unc so like you know not only are you playing against the top but you're also playing against top you know, uh, national team players as well. Um, so that's, that's pretty like cool. And then we're one of the only schools, we're the only, um, school in New York. Um, I'm probably biased because I'm from New York, but you know, I, I love that aspect where, you know, most of the conference and we just added teams. So we have California, Dallas now that we just added that are coming this season, but, you know, being in New York, it's like a, different feeling you know we're kind of there's i would say like half the conference is like north carolina south carolina like down south and then we're one of the only schools that's like up north and so it's kind of a cool atmosphere and you know so i love that piece where i get to be home you know i when i moved away and i was in mississippi and richmond you know i thought oh i might never have a chance to live back at home and getting to come back has been awesome. So I think that's, you know, between playing at or coaching and our, our girls getting to play at the highest level and being in New York, I think that's a really cool um, experience. So you mentioned that you guys are in like, you know, arguably one of the toughest conferences in, in college soccer in the US. I'm guessing a lot of the girls that you work with have got aspirations of going professional. And the conversations that I'm having with these athletes that are 15, 16 is that I've got aspirations to go professional, um, whether it's through college or just go right away. How do you guys help develop your athletes to get them to a level? And what some of this like case studies that you can share with me of your girls going into like pro teams or maybe being involved in the World Cup recently? Can you share anything on that? Yeah. So first we kind of treat it. So there's two different types of kids, the kids that want to come and play pro, the kids that want to play at the highest level. Syracuse is also a very high academic school. Um, It's prestigious. It's a private school. So there's kids that want to be able to do both. Right. So the kids that want to come get an education and that's what they're focused on. We're going to still treat them um, like, you know, professionals, but it's a different type. Now, the kids that say, I want to come play at the highest level, I'll get the education, but my focus is I want to be a pro when I leave. We're going to kind of treat almost both of them like we're going to hold those players as soon as they come in to a higher standard. And I would say 90% of the girls on our team are looking to play professionally, you know, and there's nothing wrong either way. Um, but so, you know, we're going to kind of come in and treat you and hold you to a professional standard right away. Um, and you know, so we're going to give you the, like help you along the way where, whether it's the fitness piece or nutrition or, um, extra sessions, you know, so we're going to have all of that kind of built in. Um, you know, most recently we just had our goalkeeper from two years ago. She just, uh, made her NWSL debut, um, with the, with the Bay FC and she's with the Canadian national team. She, 
um, is doing that. So that's our most recent, uh, like probably at the top level, but then we've had, uh, we have a player playing who just graduated in Iceland, another one playing in Portugal, um, kind of, so you have different levels and we're excited because we have a couple players on the team that most likely will will eventually be playing at the highest level in the U.S. Um, once they're done here. So it, it, it's good to have the different levels. Um, and actually our, the, like our goalkeeper, the one that just made her debut in the NWSL, you know, she was playing for Canada on the national team. You know, she started in Portugal, went to Australia playing for Melbourne city and then from Melbourne city to the NWSL. So, you know, a little bit of a journey, but we're, you know, helping them to get there along the way. And, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to make sure that we're giving them every opportunity while they're here to prove themselves and, and, you know, so they have that opportunity to go play professionally. How often do you get DM'd or direct messaged by professional clubs or agents in regards to the girls in your team? Is it like a weekly thing? Do they check in with you at the end of the season in December? When do, when do these pro clubs reach out to you guys? So they will reach out more to the head coach. I get a little bit more, especially with the goalkeepers, because I work a lot with the goalkeepers um, here. I do everything. I'm involved in every aspect and I'm the recruiting coordinator. Um, but when it comes to the goalkeepers that they'll reach out to me, they'll usually reach out to the head coach about um, the field players. Uh, but, you know, that's it's never really stopped. It, it doesn't really stop. It's kind of like ongoing. Um, you know, we had a player go, you know, she was committed to us, came here and went to Orlando after, you know, kind of like being here for like six months. You know, there's those that happen. And then we have they're tracking our kids for a couple of years, you know, and then it's nice because we have all these connections and, you know, you make these, you know, relationships with the coaches and they're going to ask like, Hey, what do you think of this player? And the real big draw about the ACC is the ACC coaches look out for their players, not just their players, but they look out for the players in the ACC. So, you know, whether they're at another school, they still might say, Hey, take a look at this kid because they want our conference to be the best, you know? And so they'll, they'll help other schools. If, if, they're saying like, you know, a professional team will call and say, hey, do you have any forwards? They might say, yeah, we have these players that we like, but also you should take a look at this school's forwards. And, you know, we kind of do the same thing. And or they'll our contacts will ask us like, hey, I know you played this school this week. What did you think of this player that you played against? And we'll be like, oh, yeah, they were good. And, you know, the schools kind of all do that. So it's nice that we have that network. That's awesome, man. And you mentioned that you help athletes with their strength, conditioning, their nutrition program. I've seen some videos of your campus online. It looks absolutely unreal. Walk me through what athletes get access to. It must be pretty incredible. I mean, you're wearing a Nike shirt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they're spoiled. Um, you know, and I, I've been at. I've been at you know obviously several schools, several levels. So I've got to kind of see a little of everything. And, you know, it's one of those, like, everyone has, everyone has their own, like, niche and they have their own. So I think Syracuse, you know, we strive to be the best. You know, there's a new, um, there's a new uh, construction project that's coming here. We're in our first phase. It's a, like a five phase plan, but like, so we're getting all new facilities. Um, which is, at the end of the day is going to be amazing um, for for the girls that they're going to get all all this new upgrades. Um, you know, we have a grass stadium in New York, which is kind of like in the Northeast. You wouldn't think grass; you'd think turf. No, we're playing on grass. You know, gear. We're we have a lot. You know, there's going to be schools that have more. There's going to be schools that have less. I think we're we're pretty spoiled in that sense. Um, you know, they get, I think a cool thing here is like, we have kind of like an Olympic village, we kind of call it. 
all of our athletes live on one side of the campus and it's called south campus and it's not like dorms it's apartments so they live in kind of their own little apartment instead of like a dorm and they have their own bedroom kitchen bathroom like so i think that's pretty cool um yeah i mean we're we're getting to travel and getting to you know play these big time schools yeah i think we have a one two a five field grass field practice field with lights then we have two indoor facilities for practice we have some several outdoor turf fields for when the weather isn't great but you still want to go outside when you know in the winter here we don't train outside we train indoors in our our indoor facilities you know so i think we have a lot and it's nice and like i said you're always going to find schools that have more you're always going to find schools that have less i think we're towards the top of that list though and i think a lot of people would be very happy if they had what we had that's amazing i mean i see those nike shoes you got there on the top right it looks pretty cool well your, your top left i should say for you uh, yeah <laughs> yeah that's cool man they look after you pretty nicely over there eh? we get we get spoiled i i I, I say I the team is spoiled. I, I can't lie. I'm spoiled at times too. So, Well, the boys over here are a size. I think Stefan's a size medium. Will's a size large shirt. I'm a... <laughs> no, but that's cool, man. And so, I mean, you're about to come on over to New Zealand. We're so excited. We've got so many cool plans for you when you get here. And there's so many talented athletes here. In the recruiting process, there's going to be, obviously, there's a lot of girls that are like 15, 16, 17 that have got their eyes set on your program like they're coming from all over the place from new zealand we've got girls from australia flying over to come and see you and they want to put their best foot forward what is some advice that you could give them that would help them make them stand out a little bit more when they come and speak with you subject to ncaa rules i want to make that very clear we'll follow the ncaa yeah. rules here okay I, I was making sure in case compliance is listening to this but um what are some things that these girls can do to to stand out from the rest is it just being a bit more prepared about your school is it looking into you like what can they do uh, honestly i think the biggest thing is just come over be themselves you know don't be afraid to say hi um don't be afraid to to play just be confident you know i think confidence is it, 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 it you can see when a player is confident don't worry about making mistakes like Honestly, I don't what like when I'm watching, I don't care about mistakes. I care about how do you react to the mistakes? I care about, you know, if you make one mistake, do you turn it into two, three, four mistakes? Or is it like, um, I'm just going to keep working how hard, you know, and like hard work shows, you know, like those are the easiest things to just, how's your work rate? How, how hard are you pushing? You know, like, if you're a forward, yes, yeah, score goals. If you're a defender, goalkeeper, don't give up goals. Yes, that you know that all's gonna kind of show, you know. But I think the players that come and just be themselves, be outgoing, work hard, you know, and just play with that confidence, they do the best. The ones that are trying too hard or they, you know, give up on plays, kind of you can tell when they're nervous. In you know, it's, you're always going to have that little bit of nerves. It's okay. But I think like the, the earlier you can get comfortable, the better. Um, yeah. As far as like, want like, it's good if you do research, if you want to go to a school, like knowing about the school and knowing about the program, that's fantastic. You know, if you're looking up records or, you know, if you're looking at a school and then this just isn't for Syracuse, but it, any school you can look on their website and you know see how did they do the past season how many goalkeepers if you're a goalkeeper how many goalkeepers do they carry on their website if you come up and you know you're like i see you have six goalkeepers do you want a seventh you know that's kind of tough but if you look and you're like oh i see that you had a senior goalkeeper leave and are you looking to still bring in another one and you know those little things can be big and i don't know how it is down there but i think being able to watch the level and see like doing your research like getting to watch um the teams play will help you understand like oh i can play at that level or oh this is what i'm going to need if i'm going to be there um and 
a cool thing about Syracuse is we have a really good um, kind of partnership with ESPN. We're one of the only schools that gives um, all internationals links to all their games. So like the parents never miss games because they get a free link. So they don't have to worry about downloading or VPN or anything like that. So it's pretty cool. All of our international students get those links for their games. So that's kind of a cool thing. They get to watch the games. That's amazing, man. And I mean, you've got a lot of friends in the game in America. You're coming to New Zealand. Obviously, a few of your buddies are saying, hey, you're going to an event down in New Zealand. Are you happy to be like a point of reference after watching some of the girls if they impress you or they have the right personality and you're like, I really want to help this player. Maybe it's not my program, but D2 or maybe another D1 program. Are you happy to be a reference for them? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, when you're in this, when you're in the coaching world, you, you have a lot of people that, you know, and they might say like, Hey, I know you were down there. What do you think of this player? And it happens all the time where like, I'll just be like, Oh yeah, I saw this player. You should watch her. You should look at her. And, or, you know, they're just, they ask me what I think. That's why like when you're playing at these things, you never know who's watching, but you also never know who these coaches are talking to. So it's always a good point of reference. And, um yeah i mean i have plenty of friends that i would be like oh i saw this kid she might not be exactly my level because obviously we're at the highest level but i have plenty of friends that you know are just underneath me and then underneath them that you know they might fit better for them you know and or we might not be looking for a certain position at a time we think this player is good but we just don't need it, right? Like if we have six goalkeepers, you don't need to bring the seventh, but my friend might be like, hey, Brandon, what do you think of this goalkeeper? We're looking for one. Oh, yeah, I saw this I saw this player when I was in New Zealand. You should look at her. You know, so that happens all the time. It, yeah. Or say you're only, like in college, you're only allowed so many scholarships. If the school doesn't have any money, they just don't have any money yeah, we would love this player, but we don't have any money left for you, but I know they do. Hey, you should look at this player. We can't afford them, but maybe you would be interested. So yeah, that stuff happens all the time. Bro, that's awesome because like, obviously there's two parts of it. You know, bringing you over here is creating such an awesome opportunity for these girls. We've got a lot of talented girls in New Zealand, but also for other girls that may not meet the criteria for your program, your network is massive. Like when I was talking to our partner Ryan Arvin, D director of soccer for ASM, and I said, Ryan, like, which coaches should we bring over? He said your name right away. He said you're extremely connected. Um, he said that you love to grind, help the girls out, and I'm like, perfect, that's awesome. So when you come here, brother, we're rolling out the red carpet for you. And um, another thing that I want to address is Ryan said that his golf game is pretty good. I want to address that. I want to see how you two go head to head with each other. I mean, how's your golf game? I played today. Uh, I played nine today and I shot a 40, but then this past weekend I probably played awful. So my handicap's getting down, but I wouldn't say, you know, I'm going to try to get as many strokes from Ryan as possible. I need to know if I need to bring my clubs with me or am I going to have to rent some clubs? If I'm renting clubs, is he going to give me some extra strokes? So we'll have to see, you know, uh, uh, I'll have to, you know, I don't want to give any judgment. Yeah. I don't want to give away too much because you know, I, I need to get as many strokes as possible so I can win. Yeah, 100%. Ryan, see, the thing with Ryan is amazing guy. He's like a brother to me. He's actually my Indian twin, and um, but he's not Indian. But uh, he talks a really big game. He's got a bit of an ego about his golf. So I'm actually wanting you to come here and to kick his behind and absolutely destroy him. So I'm putting my money on you, man. But we'll have to get out for a round when you get here. But, dude, I'm so excited, like... It's going to be an awesome couple of weeks. Of We've already got plans, not just in Auckland, but in Wellington, which I'll tell you about off camera. But I really appreciate you coming all this way. It is a long flight. I looked at the flight the other day. It's over 16 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's going to be good, man. But look, thank you so much for your time. This is extremely yeah. valuable for a lot of athletes to listen to. Can't wait for you to get here, man. All right. Thanks for having me, and I can't wait to get down there.